Welcome to Inside Sim Racing and our annual attempt to pander to the kids with backwards ball caps, hipster glasses, energy drinks, and gang signs. Oh yeah, and our review of Forza Horizon 3. I think this means Midwest? Sim Racing Chassis provided by Next Level Racing. Check them out at nextlevelracing.com. So with this being the day one review of Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One, let's lay some ground rules. First, we say the Xbox One because we haven't had access to the PC version of the game yet. It's supposed to be coming later this week, as in next few days, because the game is being released in the Ultimate Edition on the 23rd, which is just a few days away. So PC version is coming soon, but we didn't have a chance to sample it for this day one review. Also, since this is a day one review, we haven't had much time with the game. This is only our review over what we were able to cover. I did go ahead and try to cover a lot of things, went and did a lot of exploring, tried to do as much as I can, but again, this is only what we've done. We will potentially have follow-up reviews to cover other topics that we don't get to here. So, with that said, let's get going on the review and let's start off with what the hell is Forza Horizon? What is it about? Well, Forza Horizon 3 continues the theme of Past Horizons with the Horizon Festival. In past Forza Horizon series games, you've just been a part of the festival, trying to make a name for yourself, and you're pretty much just a cog in the wheel of the machine. This time around though, you're in charge of the Forza Horizon Festival in Australia, which is a move that I particularly like because who doesn't like being the boss? And clearly Turn 10 and Playground Games thought the same. And what is the objective of Forza Horizon 3? To get as many fans as possible out to your events. And how do you do that? By racing, of course. If only the real world was like this and people loved racing as much as they love it in this game. Hmm. But yes, you get people to your events by racing. Whether that's closed circuit racing, trails, bucket list events, cross country circuits, head to head, street races, city sprints, or designing your own race via the new and very cool blueprint option. And that's just what I got to sample with my short time with the game. I'm sure there's more different racing event types out there. So, what if you don't care about your fans? Maybe just a little more about yourself. What else can you do? Well, you can work on increasing your XP and your credits. What does XP and credits get you? XP is pretty much bragging rights where you get to level up. And every time you level up, you get to unlock things like reward cars. Credits, on the other hand, are straight cash homie to buy new cars and upgrade the ones that you already have in your garage. Naturally, both increase when you win races, and the higher you finish and the more difficult the settings you choose, the more of both you get. But maybe racing isn't your cup of tea and you're looking for other ways to increase your fans, XP, and credits. How do you do that? Well, there are plenty of ways to do that in Forza Horizon 3. In short, you can just goof off and level up. Drifting, burnouts, catching air, hitting things, hard landings, drafting, near misses, danger sign jumps, speed zones, 180s, and even clean racing, which is pretty much the opposite of what I just explained, will help move you up in the game. So, is Forza Horizon 3 any good? Yeah, pretty much. Horizon 3 really is a celebration of cars and car culture, but you can't do that with crap cars. Luckily, that isn't a problem in Forza Horizon 3. With over 350 unique cars and really no filler cars and some great Aussie rides, there really is some fantastic cars across automotive history in Forza Horizon 3. Graphically, the cars look great and they can be even roughed up a bit, which I like. Word of advice though, while you can run the cars on simulated damage, like I did, I think I would have liked my experience more if my engine wasn't constantly misfiring and I was having to look out a broken windshield nearly all the time. Speaking of looking out the windshields, the interiors are nicely done, but again, in Forza, you can't adjust your seating position and you can't turn off the driver's hands and wheel, 
both annoying when you are using a wheel yourself. With that said, some of the cars don't feel quite as far back as they do in Forza Motorsport 6, so at least you got that. Another big improvement over Forza Motorsport 6 are the sounds. Overall, engine notes sound good, with some cars like the Ferrari FTB12 sounding fantastic. Also noticeable and welcome over Forza Motorsport 6 is the loudness of your engine note, which no longer gets drowned out by the cars that are racing around you. Thank you. Finally. Other sounds such as driving off-road, through water, and hitting shrubs also sound great. While having a whole bunch of cars that look pretty and sound good may be cool and all, if they drive terribly, that doesn't really matter. So how do the cars drive in Forza Horizon 3? Pretty good. Naturally, since this is Inside Sim Racing, we ran the Physics in Simulation mode, which brought us to two conclusions. First, the highlight of the physics has to be the off-roading vehicles that feel really great when driven off the beaten path. They have a really nice weight, and they have a predictability to them that also is very nice. On the other hand, the road cars overall feel good, but there is a bit more deviation from car to car. Some did feel really great, like the BMW E46 M3 and the Ferrari F12 FTB. They were predictable, and they had believable levels of grip. Then there were some cars that weren't so great, such as the BMW Z4 and Corvette GTE race cars. The tires on both cars felt like rocks. With that said, they are race cars and their setups can be fully adjusted, so maybe they just needed a little more tuning. Across the board, I did like the feel of all the cars in the rain, which may still be a little forgiving, but certainly was not easy. So I'm not sure if it's because we are off the track where you have to be millimeter precise in your driving line, but it just seems like in Forza Horizon 3, the cars act differently than they did in Forza Motorsport 6. In Forza Motorsport 6, it was understeer, 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 oversteer. A lot of that on pretty much most of the cars. In Horizon, it feels different. It feels like the car is more balanced neutrally or even a little more on the oversteer. Well, you have to kind of be careful going into the corners because that back end will try to swap ends on you and you actually have to drive the cars a bit more gingerly than you would think for a game where you're supposed to go out there and just kind of bash into one another. And I kind of think that's why maybe it was easier for me to run the off-road stuff because those vehicles can bash off each other a little easier. Then you get onto the pavement and you're in city streets and you're racing other cars that are banging off you and it was definitely a lot more challenging. So I'm hoping to spend more time with it and kind of drill down more on these physics. But as of right now, they seem like an overall improvement with the roadside being different feeling from Forza Motorsport 6, but I think in a good way. Of course, cars and physics aren't everything. It also takes good force feedback. If you do drive with a wheel, the first place you have to go is the advanced settings page and turn force feedback and vibration up to 100%. Well, force feedback for sure up to 100%, and I would say turn up the vibration up to 100%, and if it's a little too much, maybe back it down to about 75. Also turn degrees of rotation to 900 since this feels to be the best overall and matches the on-screen wheel. After making these changes, both the Thrustmaster TX and Fnatic CSL wheels that I tested with felt good with a lot of positive feedback coming back through the wheel. One thing though that did give me some fits when driving was changing gears. I ran with an automatic clutch so I could go between the wheel mounted paddles and the H pattern and had some issues with both. Multiple times when I downshift a gear or two, the car would drop in the neutral for no reason. Or when I was trying to turn around, the car would go into neutral or reverse. Or I had times when the car would start a race in sixth gear and I struggled to find first. To be honest, I'm still scratching my head a little bit on this one. I'm not fully sure what's going on with changing gears and all that. And I'm actually looking forward to you guys trying out the game and giving some feedback to us back in the comment section. Let us know if you're having this issue or not, or if this is something isolated on my end. Of course, cars and physics and force feedback isn't everything if the AI is bad. 
Luckily, the AI is pretty serviceable. They'll rough you up, and while they're roughing you up, you'll definitely be wishing that Forza Horizon 3 had the proximity arrows that Forza Motorsport 6 got recently to help you out in cockpit mode, because in cockpit mode, it is very difficult to see the cars around you. But I do think this is an acceptable amount of beating and banging from the AI for this type of game, which, let's be real, promotes beating and banging. The races are made up of 12 cars in the field, so I also feel like that is a nice number. There are eight levels of AI difficulty, which are plenty. Mostly I ran the third from the top level expert, which I found to be a good level for off-road racing and pretty hard on the asphalt. On the dirt side, I was able to be very competitive at expert and even have some pretty good races running in pro and even unbeatable. But on the asphalt side, for me to just jump into a race and be competitive and have a per chance of winning, I had to drop the AI level down to highly skilled to have a chance. And anything above that, I was definitely getting beaten up, especially in my first go of the race. So again, racing on the asphalt in Forza Horizon 3 is pretty challenging. Now, the AI does something interesting to make sure the races are balanced. So if you go and drive a certain car, it will try to go and get cars that are of similar speed. But there are some ch times when this isn't possible. For example, I ran in a Chevrolet only race and I ran in the Corvette GTE race car against a bunch of other road Corvettes and Camaros and what have you. And I thought I'm going to kill these guys, but that's not the case. In Forza Horizon 3, they definitely speed up slower cars to your faster car speed and will slow down faster cars to run more to your level. Overall, I think this is a good thing, but I will be honest, sometimes it's a little frustrating when you go out and buy a super fast car to blow the doors off of everyone and you find that not to be the case. Which is why I suggest when you're going through Forza Horizon 3, go pick out cool cars you want to drive that aren't necessarily the fastest. Go get some of the old school cars, go get something that's slower but it's just a cool car because you know what, it doesn't really matter because AI is going to come to about your level for whatever difficulty level you choose in the AI. But I will note that there is an exception to this rule and those are the head-to-head -head challenges when you run up behind the car and challenge them to a quick race. And I had a few where I had a race car and I completely killed the road car I was racing against. So there, there is some imbalance where the cars really are straight up performance, but when you enter a race, that's when the game automatically balances all the cars. So now let's talk about Australia and what a smart and beautiful place to put the Forza Horizon franchise. With six different eco types that take you from the beach to the city, to the rainforest, to the outback, at least I'm told, I haven't been there yet, there is plenty of very cool places and environments to explore in Australia. In fact, there's quite a bit of exploring to do because Forza Horizon 3's map is twice the size of Forza Horizon 2's. So let's talk about the graphics of Australia and they are gorgeous. The new skies look fantastic. I love the ever-changing weather system. The environments going from the beach to the towns, through the shrubs, it really does look fantastic. The massive amount of debris that gets kicked up while racing also looks fantastic and it really, really gets you into the game. Overall, everything is just very pretty, even when it's locked at 30 frames per second, which I'm used to 90 frames per second plus driving on Sims on the PC. And I have to say, this 30 frames per second, I thought it would bother me, but it hasn't bothered me at all. With that said, Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One doesn't look quite as nice from what I remember on the PC from E3. So I'm very much looking forward to trying it out on the PC where I really think this title is going to look stunning. So as we wrap things up and I get towards my final thoughts, there are a couple things that I wanna note and these are a couple misses for me. First up, the load times are quite long, especially when getting into the game after you've already played for a handful of hours, the load times are very long. It's one of those things where you turn your Xbox One on and you walk away or go play on Facebook or something. Another miss for me are the beauty spots which just fall flat for me with a kind of whoop-de-doo cutscene. 
So let's get down to it and answer the question in the title. Is Forza Horizon 3 a buy or a pass? And even though this is a day one review, which means only so far into the single player campaign, and by so far I mean not that far, and we haven't had a chance to try it out on multiplayer because there were no multiplayer sessions allowed to show at this point, and a couple of sessions that were allowed were kind of with the development team, and those don't really allow you to explore too much, so pass up on that. And also, we haven't seen this on the PC, even though the PC is new this year. I think the PC is going to be a big player, but we haven't been able to drive that yet. So, this is just based on driving single player campaign on the Xbox One. Is Forza Horizon 3 a buy? And it totally is. And I know it's going to sound like a cop out, but pretty much the short answer is because it's Forza. The Forza franchise, whether it's Motorsports or Horizon, just continues to polish and grind and tinker and polish some more every single year. And being able to come out with a new title every year just seems to take this franchise to a better and better place. There is so much to do in single player mode and we know that multiplayer is going to be a whole new thing that's going to expand the playability twofold. I mean, not only do you get to race online, there's also going to be this four player career online co-op that we're really looking forward to play here at Inside Sim Racing. The best thing I can say about Forza Horizon 3 is that it has the experience that you want. Do you want to just burn the world down and wreck everything and just make a mess? You can do that. Do you want to go and try to get through the game as fast as you can? You can do that. Do you want to go and try to collect everything? Do all the barn finds, just find every little thing possible and take your time? You can do that. Do you want to just sit on your couch and blow steam and play with a controller? You can do that. Or if you have a rig and you're like, well, I got this rig, I got a wheel, might as well use it. Again, you can do that. Or, this game can be really, really intense. I was trying to play this at a higher level and I had to replay a lot of races. And you can go and put it up there at Pro and Unbeatable and, and play race after race after race and you can get a lot of life out of this now twice as big map in this single campaign mode. So Forza Horizon 3, it has something for everyone, which is pretty much the best compliment you can give to a game. So thanks for watching our review of Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One. Day one review, it's done. Finally, it is like 3 a.m. as we keep on doing these reviews last minute. So if you enjoyed this review, please give it a like and justify me staying up really late and drinking a bunch of stuff that's gonna kill me. And if you like it and you haven't been subscribed to the channel, Subscribe to Inside Sim Racing to get more coverage of Forza Horizon 3 and a bunch of other racing titles, especially more towards the sim side. Maybe you'll be interested in eventually getting there. Also, check out our website, isrtv.com, for the latest news, reviews, our forums. Also, we've been doing a lot of work on the website to try to make it really good for people who are getting the sim racing and trying to find the right hardware, trying to find the right software for you. All there on the website. Go check it out. Also, check out our Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Click on the link, shop through Amazon, doesn't cost you a thing, kicks back a little bit towards us, and again, justifies me buying stuff that's gonna kill me. So, for John Sable, thanks for watching Inside Sim Racing. See you guys next time.